Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Since early June, Animal Sanchez has been one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. In his last seven stars, Sanchez a record of 6-0 and and an ERA of 2.86. Tigers will need much more of that here tonight as they try and get back to their winning ways. We welcome you to Comerica Park in downtown Detroit. Game three, the Tigers and the Seattle Mariners. Hi, right, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pepper alongside Ron Allen. Glad to have you with us here for game three in the series. And, well, what more can we say about last night? But <laughs> time to move on, I suppose. Sanchez on the mound tonight. That's the good news. His last eight starts, he's been awfully efficient out there. One of the things that I've noticed about Animal Sanchez, using a lot of two-seam fastballs these days, keeping the ball in the ballpark, a lot of ground balls. He's as good as any right-hander in the game when he's going well. All right, one of the things you'll have to do tonight is stop Robinson Cano. This guy's had a really good series and really starting to heat up now for them. You know, one of the things that I noticed about Robinson Cano earlier this year when he was struggling, he had turned into a dead pull hitter, but since the calendar has turned to July, Robinson Cano is using the entire field. This is exactly what he did when he was with the New York Yankees, hitting over 300 every single year, a couple of times hitting 200 hits or more in a season. But the fact that he's going the other way now, and that's one of the reasons why that batting average is really perked up in the five games that he's played against the Tigers. We heard he was not having a good year this yeah. year until we showed up, and now he's hitting 435 yeah. in five games against Tigers pitching. They lied, Rod. They lied. <laughs> he's a pretty good player. After a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios. Check in with Matt Shepard. Coming up tonight, how about J.D. Power? Hopefully more of it. 466 feet on his homer last night. Tigers M's next.
In the series, Audible Sanchez presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Sanchez about to make his 20th start of the season. He checks in with nine wins, seven losses. The ERA a little higher than we're accustomed to seeing from Sanchez, but he does have 109 strikeouts. He's only walked 39 this season. And that ERA slowly coming down. He will face Seattle tonight as Austin Jackson leads it off for the Mariners. On another gorgeous night for baseball here in Detroit. And the first one is in there for a strike on Jackson. That's going to be imperative for Anibal Sanchez tonight. Strike one. That allows him to expand the strike zone against a team that really likes to swing the bats. They've got quite a few free swingers. Here's the 0-1 pitch. And Jackson looks at a strike 0-2. Austin has hit safely in his last three, four for ten in the series. He's had a pretty good goal of it here against his former teammates. Sanchez ready with the 0-2. And fouled straight back. Jackson, 21 RBIs this year. He has stolen three bases in this series. Tigers stole one from Seattle in game one. The Mariners returned the favor last night. Now again the 0-2 pitch. Right back up the middle into center field as Jackson reaches out and slaps a single to center. Here's the rest of the Seattle lineup presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers tonight. Jackson followed by Seeger and Cruz. Cano is having a big month, 352, which is fifth best in the American League. Smith, the DH. Trumbo is at first tonight. Ackley, Miller, and Zunino will round it out for Seattle. Here's Kyle Seeger. Batting in the two slot, two for ten of the series. And more than likely, Austin Jackson will probably try to steal a base at some point in time during this at bat with Kyle Seeger. Swing and a miss, 0 1. Not a good 0 2 pitch here thrown by Anibal Sanchez. It's a changeup, but it gets way too much plate in an 0 2 count. Austin Jackson able to reach out, hit it right back through the middle. Got to make a better pitch once you get ahead of the hitter. No balls, two strikes. Jackson has 11 steals. He's been caught eight times, though. It's one of the things that uh, his manager, Lloyd McClendon, was commenting on yesterday that Austin Jackson somehow needs to get better at stealing bases. He's got good speed. The 0 1 is in for a strike, 0 2 on Seeger. Seeger has scored a couple of runs in the series. He's hit safely in 10 of 11. Good power from that two spot of the lineup. 14 home runs this year. And might want to go upstairs with one fastball to see if you can get Seeger to chase it. Bouncing ball to first. Marte to second one. Relay. That's a double play. That's a really nice job for a guy that's really never ever played first base. A dandy play by Marte. He takes his time after he fields the ball, and then he gives Iglesias a really nice feed, knowing that if he gives him the feed inside, he can get back to the bag and finish the double play. It's a nice job. Looked like he benefited that as well uh, there from the fact that he was in a couple of steps, so he was out of the lane of the runner and had a clear shot to second. They're empty now for Nelson Cruz. They've got the shift on against Cruz. Ball one outside. Cruz hit a mammoth home run in last night's ball game. It is his only hit in the series. There's Kinsler swung around to the shortstop side of the bag at second. Here's the 1 0. Awkward swing there by Cruz, who tried to hold up. One ball, one strike. Cruz, his home run last night is 22nd of the year. He was also hit by pitch and has walked in the series. Driven foul back out of play, one and two. And Beaumont Health System will sponsor the starting defensive alignment for the Tigers this evening. James McCann back behind the plate tonight. 13 runners caught for the rookie catcher. And that leads all catchers in the American League. As a matter of fact, leads all rookie catchers. Here's the one two. Way high. Two and two on Cruz. 
Sanchez has won six consecutive decisions. He has not lost a start since June the 3rd. Robinson Cano waiting on deck. Here's the 2 2. Lifted down the right field line. That's going to slice and drop in. It's going to be extra bases. JD digs it out of the corner, and it'll be a double with two outs for Nelson Cruz. After watching Austin Jackson on the 0 2 pitch take the change up that was off the plate and hit it right back up the middle, and then now watching this breaking ball, that's a pretty good pitch. It's down, it's away from Cruz, but somehow he's able to poke out and get himself a base hit. So that tells me, partner, that Sanchez got pitched inside a little bit. All he has to do is show inside on a couple of different occasions, and all of a sudden those two pitches become pitches that they swing and miss at. We saw Taiwan Walker last night, their fine rookie pitcher, pitch inside quite a bit with his hard fastball. I would consider not even pitching to Robinson Cano right here. He is on fire, and he has worn out Tigers pitching so far this season in the five games they've played. Cruz a huge lead off the bag at second. Right. One strike on Cano. Well, in this series, Cano is five for eight. Isaac like Lacey is trying to keep Cruz close at second base. Robinson Cano also had a pretty good series against his former team in New York before Seattle came to uh, Michigan. Here's the 0-1. Bouncer right back up the middle. Iglesias has it though, and that is that for Seattle. No runs, couple of hits, and they strand a man. Here come the Tigers in the bottom of the first. Against Montgomery in the Tigers starting lineup presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. For the Tigers in this one, Davis Kinsler Cespedes in the top three spots. Victor Martinez, the DH. JD Martinez, a home run every 12.89 at bats this season. Castellanos at third, and McCann, Marte, and Iglesias, the bottom three in the lineup tonight. Brad Osmus, and they are facing lefty. Mike Montgomery Montgomery having a pretty nice rookie season. He's made nine starts. He's won four. He's got a fastball that gets up to 94 miles an hour. First pitch grounded to second base and knocked down by Cano. One gone. And he also has a changeup that he's very fond of. He throws at about 13 percent of the time to left-handed batters, even a curveball and a slider for the rookie Mike Montgomery. Davis tried to jump Montgomery there, but rolled it right to Cano. That's the scouting report on Montgomery. He will come right after you with a lot of first pitch fastballs. Here is Kinsler batting 277. Check the swing strike call. And something else that Montgomery will do, he's not afraid to come inside against a lot of these right handed batters. Uh, the Tigers will run up there tonight against him. The 0 1. 
Kinsler is four out of nine in the series. He's had six hits on the homestand so far. Big, big home run in game one in the series in the eighth inning turned out to be the game winner. Swing and a miss. Actually hit two homers that night. One and two on Ian. Montgomery, one of those guys, gets the baseball and he's ready to go to work. My kind of guy. No doubt. Here's the one two. He's 25 years old, born in Mission Hills, California. Goes 6'4, 200 pounds. He was acquired from the Rays in late March. There are the particulars on Mr. Montgomery. And then missed inside. He's a, f a former number one draft choice, but he spent a lot of time in the minors. 159 starts in the minor leagues over eight seasons. So he's one of those guys that really knows how to pitch. Pulled fair inside the bag at third. That'll bang up against the wall. Kinsler takes the turn. He's going for two, and the tag not in time. Laz Diaz was right on it, called him safe. It's a breaking ball that stays up that Ian Kinsler able to turn on because it was up in the strike zone. And when you hit a ball down the line with Ackley in the outfield, he has some athleticism. You have to get on your horse, and that's exactly what Ian did. And that's why he was able to stretch that single into a double. Close play. Really close play, but Ian got that hand in just ahead of the tag. Right there. So an early scoring chance for the Tigers. Here is Cespedes. 22 in the double category now for Kinsler. Ball one. Nice teaching moment for the young kids at home. If you're sliding head first in two second base and the ball's coming from left field. You put your hand on the bag exactly where Ian Kinsler put the hand on the bag, which made it a very difficult a job for the second baseman, Cano, to reach all the way over there and apply the tag. And take a look at where Ian's hand hits the bag. Which makes it a very difficult place to reach back for Cano. It's a nice job by Ian. 2 and 0 on Cespedes. 3 and 0 on Ioannis. We were marveling at his walk in the ball game last night. <laughs> it was his first in 32 games. He's going to get another one here. Would he go back to back games well, with the walk? It looks like he's not going to pitch to him with the base open. He has good numbers, home run numbers against the Mariners in his career. He was swinging on 3 0. Had a changeup. Now that's not right. And when the manager gives you a green light three, you know, he wants you to swing at a fastball, not a changeup. Tell me, man, he just doesn't like to walk. He's going to go up there swinging three and one. Montgomery got the leadoff man, then a double by Kinsler. Here's the three one. And he lost in ball four. The last time that uh, Jonas Cespedes walked it back to back games, you have to go back to June 9th and 10th. Let's take a peek at the starting defensive alignment for the Seattle Mariners. It is brought to you by Tim Horton. Cruz, Jackson, Ackley in the outfield. Ackley, pretty good defender, has not made an error in 80 games. Third to first, Seeger, Miller, Cano, Trumbo. Mike Zunino, the catcher for the Seattle Mariners tonight. So here is Victor Martinez with only one out. And that walk right there was by design. Montgomery really didn't want anything to do with Cano. I guess he feels like he has a better opportunity to get Victor out or get Victor to hit into a double play. Well, Victor loves facing lefties, or at least he has this year. 420 batting right-handed. I meant Montgomery didn't want anything to do with, you know, an assessment is with the base open. Victor in the series just one for seven. He's had only four hits on the entire homestand. Now Montgomery in early trouble here in the first. It's one of the things that we heard about Montgomery. He gets himself into this particular situation and he doesn't panic. He throws the ground ball. Well, there's another one. Five, four, and three. And a double play ends the inning.
Both sides have turned two so far in this one. Series. Time for the Bernstein advantage now. We want to take a look at Anibal Sanchez and the advantage he has had over, well, every offense that he's faced in his last seven starts. Now he's been getting busy. You know, the opponent's batting average just 201 against Anibal and even better. And with runners in scoring position, the number goes down to 167. First one home to Smith is line and caught at first base by Marte, who's putting on a show early in this one. It's going to be a foul ball, but a nice leaping catch. Very surprising to see Seth Smith swing at the very first pitch. He averages nearly five pitches per plate appearance. The Tigers have now hit him to 100 double plays, buddy. Whoa. And the next closest team, Toronto Blue Jays, they've only hit him to 82. So they lead by a pretty good margin. Really hard to figure out why, too. But it's been that way all season. Trumbo looks at strike one. Anibal Sanchez doing an outstanding job so far this evening with first pitch strikes. Trumbo is at 220 with a couple of home runs. He spins one up there for ball one up and in. Seattle picked him up from Arizona in hopes of uh, injecting some power and some life into their offense, but by and large, Trumbo has not done a whole lot. Rolled foul, one and two. Former Angel is Trumbo, picked him up from the Diamondbacks. His best years, though, were in Southern California with the Angels. He's a California kid, too, isn't he? Yep. Villa Park High School, which is not too far from the Big A. 18th round pick of the Halos, and he got to the big leagues and did a lot of damage there. You think it's anything to the fact that he was very comfortable playing at the house? Could be. He was injured last year, but it was awfully comfortable for him. Down he goes, looking. First strike out of the ball game for Sanchez. It's good four seam fastball at 94 miles an hour. That's down south of the knees and given the call by Chris Guccione, you know, the home plate umpire. It's a nice job by the rookie McCann, ever so slightly pulling it up to the knees to help get that call for Enable. Dustin Ackley looks at a strike. We've got ourselves just another picture perfect night here in Detroit. That we do. 75 degrees right now at the ball yard. That is chopped foul. Tonight would have been a real nice night for us to go out and hang out at the uh, 
the new Amsterdam out there. No, we can still do it if you want. We don't want to go out there on Friday night. It's too no. much of a party out there. We got to go midweek. I'm up for it. One of the more unique spots in this ballpark to watch Tigers baseball. Here's the 0 2. Up and in 1 2 on Ackley. And ball Sanchez has been first pitch strikes on six of the seven batters so far in the first couple of frames this evening. Going fastball inside. Ackley backs out. And it's two and two. Miller waiting on deck. Rolled foul. Ackley was born in North Carolina, went to UNC, but he lives in the offseason now with his wife. Justine in Lapeer, Michigan. Oh, those wives will get you to change your address now. <laughs> yes, they will. I spent about five years in Salt Lake City, buddy. <laughs> From SoCal to Salt Lake City. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yes, indeed. Here's the 2 2. Oh, we got him. Strike three in the outer edge. A couple of strikeouts for Sanchez. So one, two, three, second. Back to June 2nd, 2012, a home run that was hit straightaway center field by Miguel Cabrera that traveled 466 feet. And then J.D. Martinez in last night's game, well, he connected against Taiwan Walker, and he hit one for 66 straightaway center field. Unbelievable last night how far that ball traveled to dead center. And for J.D., his 27th of the year. He now has 14 homers in his last 24 games. Not only does uh, J.D. Martinez boast the longest home run hit here as a Tiger, but as a visiting player with the Astros, he also hit a home run here about 450 feet, which is the longest for a visiting player. And that one was hit uh, the opposite way, wasn't it? No, it was hit out the left center no, field out by Newhouser and K-Line. Oh, that's and pretty Garinger. good. Yeah, it, it might have bounced off that wall. One and two on J.D., That's up and in, and the count goes two and two. And he hit it off Maxwell Scherzer, so you know Scherzer probably threw him one of those 95, 96 rising fastballs, and JD got a hold of it. Swing and a miss. Threw it by him at 92, one gone. And here's that home run that he hit against Max Scherzer. This was in 2013.
much for this lands. Yikes, shot by number 23. I think Willie hit him that far in his day. Willie could hit him a long way. Pretty close. Willie could hit him a long way, and Willie used one of the heaviest bats I've ever picked up. It was about 38 ounces, oh. 36 inches, and he swung it like it was a toothpick. <laughs> Here's the statue of Mr. Horton. Here's the 1-0 pitch. And a strike called on Nick Castellanos. You have to really love the mound presence of this youngster here, Mike Montgomery. This guy is pitching in the big leagues for the very first time, but he doesn't beat himself with walks. He comes right after you with a mixture of fastballs, anywhere from 90 to 94. A very good changeup, as we just witnessed there to Castellanos. He was originally drafted by the Royals in the first round back in 08 and then went to Tampa in the James Shields trade. He came up uh, in the minor leagues with guys like Hosmer and Moustakis. All those very talented players they have in Kansas City's uh, big league team now. He was right there with all of them. Two and two. He busted Castellanos inside that last time. McCann waiting on deck. Low 3 2 now on Nick Castellanos. Most of the fastballs that Montgomery has thrown tonight have been up. So if you're Castellanos and you get a fastball up in the strike zone, you don't want to uh, swing at it. Change up. And he missed with it. Ball four. His second walk in the game. One on, one out. Hey, stay tuned to Tigers Live following the game. We'll select our Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game. Presented by McDonald's Big Mac and 10-piece McNuggets. Here's McCann. Boy, you have to really be impressed with what McCann has done in his rookie season in the big leagues. Last 10 games, he's been simply on fire. Overall, batting 282. And we told you that he's throwing the ball better than any young catcher in the majors. It was pretty evident during spring training that he was going to be the backup this year for Alex Avila. Physically, he has all of the tools, and really, it's not until you stand next to him side by side that you really realize how well built this kid is. He reminds me of Lance Parrish. He really does. He's a good cop. Big, strong, physical. Handsome young man, too. And somewhat soft spoken, humble. He gets on the field, boy. He's uh, he's a competitor, very humble. Here's those last ten numbers on McCann. Nine ribbies, six runs, hitting 432. Drilled to left field. Ackley on the move, stretching out, can't get it. It'll go to the wall. Castiano stopped. Now he's going to pick up his run and get the third and stop there. Castellanos didn't pick it up. And he'll stop at third base. Well, that 432 batting average just went up a tick for James McCann. It appeared to get a breaking ball up in the strike zone. And it's the exact same pitch that Ian Kinzer was able to hit down in the left field corner. Real nice approach by McCann. It's always dangerous when you leave your feet as a left fielder. There's nobody to help you. Center fielder can't get over there in time to help. So two Tigers aboard now with one out. Here's Marte batting in the eighth slot tonight. Infield in a couple of steps. Swing and a miss out in front. Yeah, Lloyd McClendon with Castellanos on third base. He does not think that Nick will come on a ball on the ground, so he's buying his infielders a couple of extra steps and by not playing them at the cut of the grass. One ball, one strike on Marte. One homer, four RBIs. The only home run he's hit at the big league level coming against these Mariners. Here's the 1-1. One, one. High, two balls, one strike. Montgomery made nine starts to Triple-A this year, had an ERA of 3.74, then was called to the big league. 
This year so far, his numbers tell you that about 77% of the time in this count, he will throw a fastball. Zanino keeps it in front of him, or at least off to his left. And it's gone to three and one. Castellanos a walk, McCann a double. If you're Marte, you are sitting on one pitch and one pitch only, and that would be a fastball. Montgomery having a difficult time with his changeup in this inning. He's bounced a lot of those, and he finds himself in a predictable fastball count. Three and two. Changeup. That kind of separates some of your guys in the big league, Mario, on this particular count right here. Mm -hmm. You're looking for that fastball. You know that's the only pitch that you're going to swing at. So even if he does throw you that change up, you're picking it up and you're not swinging at it. Bouncing ball to third, foul. Three and two on Jeffrey Marte. Sanchez hoping for some early support in this one. Swing and a miss to strike him out. So Marte is out of there, two gone. And two punch outs now for Mike Montgomery. He gave uh, Marte a steady diet of off speed pitches after he worked the count to three and one. Able to punch him out. Fear not, here comes Jose Iglesias. He's batting a solid 321. He said he felt a little better uh, today. Did not play in last night's game. He was suffering from uh, flu like symptoms. One for three in the first game. That one was a huge double in the eighth, which set up the home run, the game winning home run by Kinsler. Ball one low. Iglesias finds himself in the middle of an all-star campaign this year after missing the entire season last year. He is fourth in the American League in hitting. That's it for a strike. He watched it into the glove, 1-1. If nothing else, if you're the Tigers and you're sitting on the bench, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt when there are runners in scoring position that Mike Montgomery likes to go to his soft stuff. So when you get yourself in this situation later on, you know what to look for. Chopper back up the middle. Miller plays a funny hop and throws him out. So the Tigers get a couple of men in scoring position but fail to score. Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire.
Sanchez back at Hill. Look at these numbers. You got Sanchez and Price. When they combine, it's usually a pretty good night. However, yeah, they got to get the other guys to step up too. And when that happens, well, the Tigers certainly will be a much better team. Brad Miller leads it off. It'll be Miller, Zanino, and Jackson. They see Ganibal. Sanchez got him one, two, three in the second with a couple of strikeouts along the way. He looks at ball one, does Miller. Miller is hitting 239, just one hit in this series. He is one for nine. Pulls that one to first. Marte knocks it down. And one gone. Time for a game break now. Here is Trevor Thompson. All right, Trev, thanks. Yeah, those uh, Indians trying to hang around. They're 11 and a half out. Certainly the wild card more their style right now, along with the Tigers. There's a swing and a miss by Zanino. Dr. Smooth, that's the nickname given to Michael Brantley by his teammates. And boy, is he smooth on both sides of the ball. Zanino, 165 average. 0 and 2. Couple of doubles, three RBIs in the series. Good block by McCann, one and two. Five in a row set down by Sanchez, who has a really good ratio early in this game. And a foul tip for strike three. Third strikeout for Sanchez. Sanchez has been able to spot that 94 mile per hour fastball wherever he wants to this evening. McCann really didn't even have to move the glove. There's Jackson who led off the game with a base hit. And then was he raced on a double play. In for strike one. Both teams have two hits in this game. Cruz later doubled in the inning but did not score. Going two now on Jackson. Who has hit a ton in this ballpark. Of course, he spent four and a half years here in Detroit prior to the trade last year. A career 293 hitter here at Comerica. Sanchez trying to finish him off. Here's the 0-2. He'll do just that. Strike three call. Four strikeouts for Sanchez. Back to back one, two, three innings.
A couple of hits in this one. And the Tigers will send the top of their lineup up there. It'll be Davis Kinsler and then Cespedes. Against the left hander Montgomery. Rajay bounced out in his first at bat. In fact, he swung at the first pitch and grounded out. Great night for baseball here in Detroit. Tigers trying to win game three in the series. One more between the two squads tomorrow, wrapping it up. First one is in for a strike on Davis 0 and 1. And Rajay Davis really has not gotten a chance to play all that often lately. One Anthony Ghost has been awfully good, and two, the Tigers have not seen that many left handed starters. Davis said 265. Rajay out in front, one and two. Told you that uh, Montgomery pitched eight seasons in the minors, and when guys pitch that long down in the minors and they make as many starts as he made, you really develop the ability to pitch. And we've seen that in the first two innings here. He's mixing all of his pitches. A lot different than Taiwan Walker last night. Yeah, no doubt. Taiwan Walker, when he got himself in trouble, he tried to overthrow, and that's usually what happens when you're a young pitcher. Here's the one two. Thought about it. Two and two. Big league debut came in June, gave up just one run, and left with a two to one lead against the Yankees. He went six innings. Whistle foul back out of play. These are two teams that are trying to put a winning streak together. Neither has really been able to do it. Inside three and two. Last time Seattle won three in a row, it was late May. Same story for the Tigers. And he missed again high with an off speed pitch. Leadoff man is on. We'll check in now with Johnny Kane, who has found some friends here at the ballpark. Well, that I have here, Mario. It is University Days, and uh, tonight Eastern Michigan is here. We've got part of the uh, cheerleaders and the dance team here. University Days, you know, they had Central Michigan here was a couple uh, couple weeks ago, and then they got the next one coming up uh, on August 21st to be Michigan State. But tonight it's all about the Eagles. Maddie, what's going on tonight? Um, so we just did a little performance for the opening pitch and the pregame, and then seventh inning stretch, we'll be out on the field doing the dance with the Energy Squad. So we're super excited. Let's do that dance. Let's do a cheer if we get a little go green, go white, I think, here. Go green, go white. And I will say, if you want to be a part of University Days, what you want to do is go to tigers.com slash special events. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Johnny, thank you. There's a wide throw that's going to score a run on the butt by Kinsler. A throwing air by Kyle Seeger, and Davis will come all the way around to score. The Tigers have a one nothing lead. Kyle Seeger does a nice job coming in to get this bunt off the bat of Ian Kinsler. Looked like he would have had him had he made a nice throw. But once he throws the ball over the head of the first baseman, Rajay Davis running from first, you know he's going to score. Ian Kinsler able to get to second base. Surprised that Ian didn't get to third. He got about halfway down the third line to third and just kind of put on the brakes and headed back. It's 1 0 in favor of the Tigers. That'll bring up Cespedes. So Davis walks and comes around to score. See if they give uh, Kinsler a hit and an air. It is. Bunt single and an E5. Allowing the run to score. One ball, no strikes on Cespedes. Two and another count on Ioannis. Still nobody out. Tigers have taken the lead here in the third. Ioannis walked in the first inning. He'll take to run the count to three and zero. Victor Martinez is waiting on deck. A 
Montgomery appears to be awfully careful again with Johannes Cespedes. Here's the 3 0 coming home. And he walked him again. How about that? Walks in back to back at bats for Cespedes. It's uh, the fourth walk already in this game now for Montgomery. Well, just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. And last time you and Cespedes walked two times in a game, you have to go all the way back to May 21st. That's two months. Literally. Well, good for him. It didn't appear that uh, Montgomery was going to give him a chance to drive in another run. Hey, there's a Miggy sighting. Miggy and Iggy. Go to see Cabrera, right? Two on, nobody out. Victor bounced into a double play his last time up. And he steps away from ball one. Martinez now just one for eight in the series. Came in batting 450 this year against Seattle pitching. Kinsler, Cespedes, the base runners. And Montgomery again looking for a ground ball. That'll get away from Zanino. Both runners advance. What happened there? I don't know, but you don't see it very often from Zanino. He's a very good receiver, a very good game caller, good defensive catcher. Just whiffed at it. That'll be a pass ball. So the pass ball advances the runners, taking the double play out of order. Meanwhile, it's 2 0 on Martinez. They've had a couple of walks at air and a pass ball in this inning for Seattle. That's on the outer edge of strike two and one. I'm still trying to figure out why Montgomery has decided to pitch around Cespedes here this evening. Cespedes' batting average against left handed pitching this year is under 200. And he really hasn't done that much damage this year against Seattle pitching. And Victor is over 400 against lefties. Interesting. Drill down the left field line. That ball is fouled by a couple of feet. A couple of different fastballs thrown by Montgomery. He has the four seam fastball that gets up to about 94. And then he also has another fastball that the cut fastball about 90. That was the last one he threw to Victor. Two and two on Martinez. Second and third, nobody out to run in. Just got a piece of it. Victor had a four hit game against Seattle back at Safeco Field, part of that big series he had on the last road trip. Eight hits total in that series. Does not get any easier with JD Martinez on deck. Another foul straight back. And now the left hander Montgomery up to 56 pitches. Tigers supporting Sanchez with some early offense, looking for more here in the third. This will be the seventh pitch coming up in this at bat. Again, back out of play. Montgomery tossed back to back shutouts against the uh, Royals and Padres at late June. And the, uh, the game he threw against the Padres was a one hitter. And he had it going at that time. 
We also told you that uh, Kansas City, the team that he grew up with. Combined six hits, 17 strikeouts in those two starts. Victor pops this one up. Slicing down the right field line. Long run. Who's going to get there? Cano. Nice play. And the runners will hold. Robinson Cano had to spin quickly and get that ball back in. First out of the inning. Cano looked like he was the only one that was going to be able to make the play. Ian Kinsler did not tag up. He was halfway. And when Cano stopped to turn, uh, he slipped. So they'll walk J.D. Martinez here with first base open. And play for a ground ball from Castellanos. They will take the bat out of J.D.'s hands. Martinez struck out his first time up. So this will be the third walk in the inning, albeit intentional. Tigers want no part of JD in this situation. Set up Castellanos for a double play. And Castellanos is one that really loves to swing at the very first pitch. I'm sure the Seattle Mariners know that as well. So we'll see if Montgomery and Zunino decide to start him off with something off speed. For 13 this year with the bases loaded, but Nick has bounced into 13 double plays this year, which is the most on the team. That's a lot. 100 total for the Tigers. That's what the uh, Mariners are banking on right here. Ball one in. Castellanos walked on a 3 2 pitch back in the second inning. The ball that was up and in. 100 double plays this year. On pace for 172, which would be shy of the major league record. Back him out of there again, 2 0. This is the toughest inning that Montgomery's had. The Tigers have had a lot of traffic early on in this game. In every inning. Five walks of the game for Montgomery. Driven deep in the air to left field. That ball is hit well. Nick Castellanos has a grand slam. <laughs> wow. No ground ball in that at bat. A big fly for Castellanos. That might be the furthest ball I think I've seen Castellanos hit in the two years he's been in the big leagues. First career grand slam for Castellanos, and he made the most of it. Five nothing Detroit. Hit speed at 105.8 off his bat. And just like that, the Tigers break it open with a five spot. Cespedes was telling Cassianos how far that ball went. Cassianos didn't believe him. Miller throws on McCann. It's a nice job by Castellanos. Very patient at bat. He worked the count to 2 0. And then he got himself a four seam fastball that was right down the middle. And he put one of the best swings of his career on it. That ball landed right underneath Al Kaline's statue out there. Wow. Up against the brick wall. There have been some long home runs in this series. 5 0 Detroit. Marte looks at a ball. 
So Cassiano's now with 43 RBIs. That was his eighth home run of the year. It was a big one. To third, diving stop Seeger. Nice play. He's thrown out in time. Infield hit for Marte. Seeger is a pretty nice defender down at third base. Couple of steps and a dive. He gets to his feet quickly. He bounces the ball across the diamond to Trumbull, but not before uh, the right foot of Marche on the bag, and he's crossing first base. It'll be the fifth hit for the Tigers. Here is Iglesias now, the ninth man at bat in the inning. And you're looking to strike 0 1. That one spins outside. One ball and one strike. It all started with a walk to Rajay Davis. The throwing air has been big in this inning. Pass ball. Here's the 1 1. Instead, it'll go back to first. He has thrown 33 pitches in this inning, so the pitch count has jumped up to 71 now. Ball low. Two and one on Iglesias. Drill down the left field line. It's going to get down and go to the corner. Let's see if this gets another run in. Marte coming to third. Dave Clark waving him home. No relay. Marte dives in safely and the Tigers lead six to nothing. This has been the shakiest start of young Mike Montgomery's career. He's given up six runs so far to the Tigers. He had not given up six runs in any of his starts. Uh, that fastball he tried to get inside Iglesias sitting there for it and doubles down in the left field corner. That's what the Tigers did last night very well in, in their game against Taiwan Walker. He, they barreled him up quite often. Well, Iglesias has his 19th RBI. The Tigers have put up a six spot here in the third. And now early action in the bullpen for Seattle. Rollins, who pitched in the ball game last night, heating up again here tonight. And we're only in the third inning. Here's Rajay Davis batting for the second time here in the third. And Rajay looks at a strike 0 1. Strike called quickly 0 and 2 now. Ten men to the plate here in the third for the Tigers. Six runs, five hits Detroit, no runs, two hits Seattle. Line drive off the club of Seeger. Here comes Iglesias. He is going to score. No throw to second. A belly flop in there by Rajay. Coming in hot. Seven to nothing. What kind of slide was that by Rajay? That was uh, reminiscent of Prince Fielder slides. <laughs> the play probably should have been made by Seeger, good defender down there, but the ball trickles away from him, which allows the Glaciers to come home and score. And then on the throw, uh, Rajay Davis able to get the second base. But take a look at the slide once he gets to second. Here's Davis coming in hot. Oh, what happened there? Did he get his chin? Well, that's going to chase Montgomery. Davis is all right. A little bit messy. Wall side windows pitching change. To the bullpen go the M's. We'll be back.
brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica. Chrysler, enjoy your summer in style with great deals at the Chrysler Summer Clearance Event. And by Hellman's Mayonnaise, bring out the best. Well, the Tigers bringing out their best here in the third. They have scored seven times. They have six hits in this ball game and uh, some shoddy defense as well. There are the numbers on Montgomery, two and two thirds. He is still responsible for Davis at second base. A bumpy outing, to say the least. So to the bullpen go the Mariners early in this one. Rollins has come in and he will face Ian Kinsler. He's batting for the second time in this inning. Numbers on Rollins. Now Rollins pitching in his sixth game. And he's logged four and two thirds inning. The ERA at seven. Get back out of play. One ball, one strike. Ian, two out of two in this game already. A single, a double, a run scored. His base hit was a bunt single that was thrown away by Seeger at third base, who's just had a rough inning. He's committed two errors. Lifted foul again. One ball, two strikes. And Seeger is a really good defender down at third. Yeah, he said he has a nice reputation of making all the plays down there. Now Rollins ready with the one two. And that is going to get down a base hit. It'll go to the corner and score another run. Kinsler is on his way to second with his third hit of the game already. Eight nothing Detroit. It's good to see Ian's bat perk up. Much better balance at the plate these days, not lunging for the ball. That ball is off the plate outside, but he's able to reach out and double down in the right field corner. Second double of the night for Kinsler. It's his 34th multi-hit game this year. It's among the best in the American League as Cespedes looks at a strike. What an outburst for the Tigers, an eight-run third. One two on Cespedes. A couple of walks for you, Anis. And the O2. Way outside. One ball, two strikes. Sanchez has to be feeling pretty good about an eight spot. Here's the one two. Tigers bet 13 base runners already in this game. And we're still just in the bottom of the third. Just lifted to center. Jackson came in. Now he backs up. That'll finally end the inning. But it's a big inning for the Tigers, and there was one really big hit. Nick Cassianos, first career grand slam. He hit 447 feet. Tigers in command.
In any inning this year, and Nick Castellanos with a grand slam highlighted that frame. Now, Anibal Sanchez with some breathing room as we go to the fourth inning. His first one is in for a strike right at the knees. Kyle Seeger leading things off. Seeger had a couple of errors in that inning. Bounced into a double play back in the first. Here's the 0 1. So Sanchez continues to come out throwing strikes. He's got great location tonight as well. Everything that he's thrown for the most part has been south of the knees, unless he's in elevated the fastball at 94 on purpose. One and two on Seeger. Two for 11 in the series. He has hit safely in 10 of his last 11. Cruz waiting on deck. And he just missed. Ooh. Two and two. We'll swing back fastball at 93. Ripped down the right field line. Seeger got a hold of that one. Bangs it up against the right field wall. JD going to fire it back into second base. And his throw is just a little bit late. Leadoff double. JD's got himself 10 assists this year. He's got a strong arm. Had to wait for the ball to come off the wall, and that allowed Seeger to get a couple of extra steps. And he needed those extra steps to slide in safely. Very accurate throw as well by JD. That'll be the third hit of the game now for Seattle. Here is Nelson Cruz. Seven straight had been retired by Sanchez before that double. Cruz sends one high in the air to left field, way back. And Seattle is on the board with another monster home run from Nelson Cruz. Cespedes did not even move in left. No, he didn't. And why would he? A two-run moonshot put Seattle on the board. Sometimes the outfitters will give you a little courtesy movement back toward the fence just to make you feel good as a pitcher. Cespedes took one step back and then froze in his tracks. They call Cruz the boomstick, and he brought it out here. Oh, my goodness. It is an 8-2 ball game. Cano slices one to left. That's a base hit. That was a very lengthy sit down for Anibal Sanchez while his team scored eight runs in the bottom half of the third inning, and he's come out in this inning not as sharp as he was in the first two. Three straight hits now for Seattle. Bring out Jeff Jones, the Tigers pitching coach, and now five hits for the M's. And one of the things that uh, Jeff Jones might remind uh, Anibal Sanchez of is the fact that even though you have an eight run lead or you had an eight run lead, you have to still incorporate all of your pitches. All three of the hits in this inning have been on fastball. Well, it's time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Detroit Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T-Mobile. So Seattle has a little bit of life here. After falling behind 8-0, Seth Smith will stand in. Smith hit a line drive in his first at bat that was caught by the first baseman Marte. That floats in for a strike on one. Checked it, strike called, and it's 0 and 2 now on Smith. 
Been on base a couple of times in this series. Set two out of eight, but he's also walked a couple of times, scored three runs. In fact, he was walked intentionally twice in last night's game. And his second intentional walk was followed by the grand slam by Gutierrez. That's outside one two. Just about 45 percent of the runs scored by Seattle this year have come via the homer. Well they've gotten two more on the Cruz long ball. Little chopper foul first base side and a broken bat as well. Smith will get a new one. Sanchez had back to back one two three innings but then a double by Seeger and the two run shot by Cruz. Drill to right field that ball is hit well JD turns around on it off the wall. Smith on his way to second base he will slide in. Out in second. What a tag by Iglesias. That'll leave Cano at third. That ball was hit so hard off the wall, I was very surprised that Smith tried to stretch that single into a double, especially with the arm strength of J.D. Martinez. Now 11 assists for J.D. in the outfield. But it was Iglesias who made this play. Not only did he short hop it on the backhand, but then reached for the tag. That could be an inning changer. Instead of first and third, it's runner at third with one out. 11 assists now for J.D. Martinez, second in the majors. Trumbo has struck out in his first at bat. The more concerning thing though is another hard hit ball here against Sanchez all on fastballs in this inning. Cano at third base. Little chopper to the shortstop that'll score the run. Ooh, Trumbo is going to be safe at first on a throw that was off the bag. That is a uh, mental mistake by Iglesias. He is about as good as they get at the shortstop position, but every now and then he will get nonchalant when a guy's hustling down the line, and because of that, he will not make a good play. It's a mental mistake. So trouble will get an RBI. The Tigers will have their first error of the game. Still only one out of the inning, and here is Dustin Ackley. Ball one. Tigers got eight in the third, and the M's have come back to answer with three. Eckley struck out in the second. Double homer, single, single, and an error by Iglesias. Here's the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes on Ackley. Dustin was the second overall pick in the 2009 draft, and in that draft, there were guys that were selected after him by the name of Mike Trout, Shelby Miller, Drew Storen. They were all taken after Ackley, who was very highly thought of as a hitter in college. Way inside, 3 0. But it is not transferred to the big league level. A lot of good guys uh, you just mentioned drafted after him. Superstars in the game. Yeah. All stars. All stars.
three and zero on Ackley. That's in there is strike three and one. That's one of the things that the uh, Kansas City Royals did so well when they were losing 100 games a year and they were getting very high draft choices. The guys that they were taking, the Kansas City Royals, all those guys kind of panned out. And they're all contributing now in the big leagues for Dayton Moore, their general manager. Houston, Astro, right? Houston Astros, same situation. They haven't missed with many of their draft choices lately. Neither did the Rays back in the day. Good point. And yeah, they were finishing last every single season, and they got some really good talent in their system. They just have not been able to keep them. When you get those high round draft choices, man, you do not want to miss. They could make or break your team for a long time. Runner going and it's lifted toward left and it's going to slice foul. Well Sanchez needs to pay a little bit more attention here to Trumbull and not allow him to get such a big jump. And because he can definitely strike out Ackley but McCann will have no opportunity in throwing out. A Trumbull at second base if Anibal Sanchez doesn't keep him somewhat close. The worst in baseball 87.4%. Against bouncing ball back up the middle, Kinsler has it, clips the second one, relay in time. Nice job by Sanchez. He could have caught that ball, but he simply let it go to Kinsler. Mariners get three back, eight three score. And Nick Castellanos grand slam has turned out to be so far the big hit in this game although give the M's some credit they have uh, come back with three of their own. Tigers trying to go up 2 one in this series. This Cruz with yet some more damage against the Tigers. He uh, hit a two run shot. Amazing what he's been able to do in his career against Tigers pitching. He was a late bloomer too. He didn't really start performing at an elite level until he was about 27. 28 years old in Texas. Victor Martinez will lead it off. It'll be Victor, JD, and then Castellanos facing a lefty Rollins who had to mop up in the third. First pitch grounded toward third, fielded by Seeger. So Victor now in a bit of a mini slump, 0 for 3 in this one. One gone. I'll bring up JD. Intentional walk run scored for JD Martinez. Slides in for a strike 0 and 1. JD. 287 coming in. 
has picked up his 11th assist defensively in this game. Ball outside 1 1. I really had no idea. And from watching J.D. Martinez last year that his arm. Is as strong as he's displayed this year. No and, and you brought up a good point last night. There were times last year where he was lifted defensively. Quite often. One and two to count. And J.D. told me that when he was with Houston Dave Clark the third base coach was also on that coaching staff and. He said that Dave Clark hit him a lot of ground balls while he was in. Houston a lot of fly balls as well. Gives Dave a lot of credit. For where he has come defensively. JD left the strike zone there, two gone. Here's our Bill Tire pitch by pitch. And last time Cassianos was up, Mike Montgomery knows he likes first pitch fastball, so he started him off with a breaking ball. He missed with that, then he missed again inside. So now if you're Cassianos, you're sitting for the fastball. He got it, and he hit it about 410 feet from home plate. You look at a strike right at the belt, 0 and 1. I don't know what it is between uh, these two teams, and they've only played six times this year, and there's been a boatload of home runs, and really nothing cheap about any of them. We got a long way to go in this one, and one more tomorrow as well. 1 1 the count on Castellanos. Walk to go with this grand slam. A little bit outside, two and one. So Castellanos now has 10 hits and 13 RBIs in the season series against Seattle. Not to mention four home runs. Into the glove for strike two. Mullins came out to get the final out in the third. McCann waiting on deck. Tigers trying to get back to 500 with a win tonight. They came in at 46 and 47. Way outside. Three and two. And he got him. Strike three. Castellanos, not so sure about it, but a one, two, three inning for Rollins. Let's go to the fifth at Comerica. It's 8 3 Detroit.
gentlemen at the ballpark tonight that uh, share a bond. That would be Anibal Sanchez, the Tigers' right hander, and Rich Donnelly, who is the third base coach for the Seattle Mariners. And both of them share a bond because both of them have lost a child. Anibal Sanchez's son, Allen, died when he was just an infant. And uh, the daughter of Rich Donnelly, Amy, passed away of cancer when she was just 17 years old. And these two fellows here, Sanchez and Donnelly, each had a, a mutual friend in baseball who introduced them to each other. And now they've become a support group for each other. And it really has become a, a touching story in baseball. Sanchez and Donnelly have talked and they have uh, talked about how difficult their lives have been since losing their children. And uh, it's really kind of inspirational to see how close they have become uh, based on a tragedy. And Sanchez goes to work here in the fifth inning facing Brad Miller. It's also very nice uh, to have someone that uh, knows what you do for a living that's also gone uh, through that kind of a tragedy off the field that you can really bond with and talk to for that matter. Yeah, no question. And uh, those two have been able to do that. Donnelly follows Sanchez every start he makes and uh, Sanchez has become really close with Donnelly. Donnelly also said that every time that San Sanchez is pitching he knows it and then the next day he's looking at the box score hoping that he went out and had a very good outing which is usually the case for Annabelle. Two and two on Brad Miller. He'll get things going here followed by Mike Zanino and Austin Jackson in the fifth inning for Seattle. Here's the 2 2. High fly ball that's going to sail back toward the seats. Castellanos can't get there. 2 and 2, the count remains. Rich Donnelly uh, down at third base is what we call a lifer in this game. He was on three, I think, uh, Jim Leland staffs in Florida, in Pittsburgh, and in Colorado. The 2 2 again. Swing and a miss. Good bomb. Well, we talked to Rich Donnelly uh, earlier yesterday, and he had this to say about Donnyball Sanchez. I keep track of his days that he pitches almost as much as uh, somebody else that would be a Tiger fan would. I know when he pitches, I know who he's pitching against, and the first thing I do the next morning is I check the box score to see how he did. And uh, if he did well, I smile. They've been smiling out a lot lately. There's no question. But it's just a uh, terrific side story that sometimes you don't realize what goes on and how baseball brings people together. Zanino the batter. And he pulls one. Nice stop at third by Castellanos. He is doing it all tonight. I see you, Nicholas. I see you. Two gone on a diving play by Nick Castellanos. And one step at a dive for Cassianos. He gets up and fires across the diamond to Marte, who had to come off the bag, but is still able to apply the tag to Zanino. He took a double away from Zanino. There's Jackson now with two outs. AJ looks at a strike. Eight runs on seven Tigers hits, three runs on six hits for Seattle. One and one. Jackson had a single to start the game, but quickly was erased on a double play ball by Kyle Seeger. Front of the count now, two balls, one strike. Sanchez in search of his third one, two, three inning. On a line to right field. JD on the run, not going to get it over his head. That'll go up against the wall. Jackson motoring to second base with a two out double. And he's had a really nice series here against his former mates. And Jackson got himself in a pretty good count. It's two balls and one strike, and Sanchez tried to sneak that fastball by Austin. And J.D. in right field playing shallow, not able to run it down.
get a chance to uh, chat with uh, Austin yet. Have not caught up with AJ. I better do it tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, tomorrow's the last day. Last day in. Here is Seeger. You talked to him yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, I did. That nice conversation. How's he like in Seattle? He loves the Seattle. He really does love Seattle. He's always loved Seattle. Growing up, King Griffey Jr. was one of uh, Austin's favorite players. Perfect. And now he gets to see King Griffey Jr. on occasion. He said he wore his hat backwards like King Griffey Jr. did when he was growing up. Here's the 0 1. Seeger trying to drive in a two out run here. Doubled and scored ahead of the Cruz home run in the fourth. I don't know what it is with uh, Anibal Sanchez splits this year, but uh, coming into play tonight, left handers were hitting only 206 against Sanchez, and right handers were hitting 272, which is awfully surprising. Pulled foul. Here's those uh, numbers I just spoke of. The 206 against left handers, that is a career best so far. Tigers pitching, though, has had trouble with this count putting guys away on 0 2 counts. Opponents are batting 196, which may not seem high, but that's third highest in the major leagues. And an 0 2 coming home here. Little pop up into left field. Cespedes goes over to make the catch. And that is that. No runs. Double one man left. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire. And the former Tiger has signed a minor league contract with the Toronto Blue Jays. He had pretty good career numbers against the Blue Jays in 33 games. Excuse me, a 3.30 ERA in 41 games. Vargas going to have uh, Tommy John surgery for the Royals. That's another blow to their rotation. And have you seen what Zach Greinke has done recently? He might just be the best right-handed pitcher in the game as we speak, Mario. Well, his numbers are making a strong argument. He's got six straight starts without giving up a run. McCann pops up a bunt. Zanino is going to get it. One pitch, one out. It's a great idea by James. We've seen him bunt four base hits this year down the third baseline, but he's going to drop the barrel of the bat on that one, causing the pop up. Watch the barrel of the bat. As soon as it drops right there, you're going to pop it up. You've got to get that bat at a different angle, which creates. And you getting on top of the ball, so to speak, to get it on the ground. Jeffrey Marte, one for two, infield hit, run scored. 
ripped to left, but foul. Marte is better than the Mets system, and most recently the athletic system was signed by the Tigers in the offseason as a minor league free agent. Spent all of last year in double A with the athletics at Midland. Ball high, 1 1. You ever play in Midland? Nope, never played nope. in the Texas League. I hit every other league but that league, man. Well, you missed some long bus rides. I, I did. Hit. I missed some long bus I hit the Southern League, though. Oh, well, that's. that's there was long. some long yeah. bus rides in the Southern League. I mean, you go from Knoxville, Tennessee, where I was playing double A ball, all the way down to Orlando, Florida, and that was a long trip. No air conditioner on the bus. And you had internet back in those days. No, you had busy. nothing. We had the boom box in the back going, though. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see it. <laughs> this was this before headphones and walk bands and all that stuff. And the big boom box. Oh, man. Now, who got to pick the music? I guess it just kind of, you know, ranged on who had, su yeah. you know, seniority, you know. Two balls, two strikes. Or whose D batteries lasted the longest. <laughs> there you go. Here's the 2 2, and it's outside. Three balls, two strikes. Those were some fun times, though. Wouldn't trade a minute for anything in the world. So, now what would be your longest bus ride? Maybe, what, 12 hours? 16, I think. 16. I think that's like 16 hours, I believe, that trip. Nice. Bouncing ball to short. Miller to his left. Scoops it up. And Marte, who runs pretty well for a guy's size, two gone. Well, the 10th annual Fiesta Tigres is August 8th when the Tigers battle the Boston Red Sox at 708. First 10,000 fans 21 and older receive a free Tigres hat. Call 866-66-TIGER or visit Tigers.com. There were literally times when we would leave where we were playing at Knoxville and head down to Florida. And we'd be after the game. And when we got down to Florida, we'd go straight to the ballpark to take batting practice to get ready for the next game. He's got to be literally kidding. getting in at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. 1 0 on Iglesias. How do you physically perform after a 16 hour bus ride with no chance to rest? On a sandwich and some soup, too. Nice. Just <laughs> <laughs> had to go out and do it, man. I mean, it's like a mind over matter. You had a dream. You wanted to play in the big leagues. So you had to do it. Iglesias at RBI double. He's one for two in this game. He'll get back out of play. One, two. Well, Rollins done a pretty good job here since coming on in the third inning, giving uh, Wood McClendon what he has needed here. Innings. And preferably scoreless innings. Bouncing ball fair inside the bag at first base. Iglesias aggressively heading to second. And he's going to get in there diving with a double. Two out, two base hit. It's one of the reasons why Iglesias is hitting well over 300 this season. Uh, this is a double right down the right, the first baseline. And then earlier today, he hit a double down the left field line. So he is, he's just using the entire field. Pair of extra base hits tonight for Iglesias. Davis strokes it on the ground is short. Nice pick there by Miller who throws up the line safe. Davis beat it out. Iglesias takes third. That is a really good play by their shortstop Miller. Anybody but Rajay Davis and Anthony goes running on the Tiger side. That's an out at first base. Really nice play. See if he tagged him. Yeah, they may look at this. It looked like he did get him. Yep. Like he uh, clipped him on the foot before. And, and you know how you can tell is you can see the ball in the glove kind of jar once that left foot came up and hit the glove. So Lloyd McClendon will challenge here. Rajay Davis for the time being is called safe. There's 
Nice tag here by Trumbo on this play as they look at it. Rashi taking a look at it. Uh, so is Miller, the two participants. For some reason, the Mariners are walking off the field before the call is even made. That's because they've seen the replay on the big board here, and they're yeah. acting like they're the umpire. Right, but you know what can happen and what has happened. Yep, they're going to call him out. So that will end the inning, and that'll be it. Tigers will get a double. Davis is out, and we go to the sixth. Sam Bernstein Law Firm, official legal services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit. Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Myers, save big with M Perks from Myers. Sign up at mperks.com. And by Chevrolet, find new roads. Another gorgeous night here in downtown Detroit. Tigers have a nice lead over Seattle, 8 3. We are headed now to the sixth inning where Nelson Cruz will get things started for Seattle. Sanchez back to work. Honeyball was staked to an 8 0 lead before Cruz hit a mammoth home run in his last at bat. It was his 23rd of the year. One ball, one strike. Nelson Cruz has very little movement in his uh, stance in the setup. Slightly open, hands up around the ear, and simply comes right down with the hands in the strike zone and generates a lot of bat speed. Still wonder why it took him so long to get to the big leagues and really become a star in the major leagues. He played a lot of games in the minors. Yeah, you never know. It's drilled down the right field line, slicing toward the corner, and that ball is gone. A home run for Cruz. That is now 21 home runs that Anibal Sanchez has given up this season, which is a new career high. And what is up with Nelson Cruz? I don't know. He, his eyes just light up when he faces Detroit. His second home run of the night, all of a sudden it's a four-run game. It's a four seam fastball that he just gets underneath and lost deep enough into the right field seats over the 330 sign. Man, is the ball flying these days? And Cano back out of there. Memory serves. Wasn't the two run homer he hit with Baltimore in the game? It was it two in game three of the ALDS? Well, I thought he hit that one to right field as well. But it was his two run shot anyway that turned out to be the game winner. That's drilled to right field. And JD hadn't played deeply though. 
one out and time for a game break here is Trevor Thompson. All right, Trev, thanks. I know uh, A-Rod's been a bit of a surprise, but the Yankees in particular as a team now, I mean, they're, at least in my estimation, a bit of a surprise out east. I would agree you know, with that. In that division, a lot of people had Toronto uh, possibly taking over that division finally this year because they felt like the Yankees didn't have enough starting pitching. Alex Rodriguez has to be the leader in the clubhouse for the Comeback Player of the Year award. He's had a great year. Fidel Nuno is warming up in the bullpen for Seattle. They have the shift on here against Seth Smith. 8 4 ball game now. Orioles can't afford to lose that game. They would drop six back. Tampa is on the horizon. So is Boston. That's the next destination for the Tigers. Fenway Park over the weekend. Did you know that uh, Nelson Cruz has 24 homers this year? 19 of them have come on the road. No. 19 home runs on the road this year. Two of them here tonight in 20 career home runs against the Tigers if you add the postseason. Cruz has given the Tigers some bad postseason members. Yeah, he single handedly has uh, have sent the Tigers home by himself a couple of years. So the Tigers getting on the phone now. A little bit of concern here. The 8 nothing lead is now 8 4. Here are the career numbers against Detroit 20 homers. Mark Trumbo settling into the box now. He skies one in the air, got underneath that one, it appears. Or did he? Yep, Cespedes will go to the track. That'll chase the runner back, two gone. Back in the day, yeah, Mark Trumbo did not miss the hanging breaking balls. But he just missed this one. Two outs for Dustin Ackley. Tigers better put their hit shoes back on because <laughs> the Seattle Mariners, they've got theirs on. Each team now with eight hits. Tigers got all eight of their runs in the third. I wonder one on Ackley and the eight runs that the Tigers were able to push across the board in the third inning the most they've scored in any one inning this season their previous high was six against the Cleveland Indians the 0 1 0 and 2 on Ackley Wilson and Kroll the righty lefty combination heating it up in the Detroit bullpen here in the sixth. And the 0 2. Got him strike three. Ackley called down on strikes. Home run for Cruz. Tightens it up a little bit more. 8 4.
Rutgers box score in this one and the uh, Tigers course had a big grand slam from Castellanos and that remains the big hit but a couple of other guys have chipped in Iglesias has had a nice day McCann has doubled and Rajay Davis at the top of that batting order has walked and he's reached on an air he scored a couple of runs Meanwhile, it's another wall side windows pitching change. Vidal Nuno has come in. And Nuno pitching in his 15th game has three holds. The ERA is very respectable at 2 4 5. 13 strikeouts, and he's only walked one. It's the third left handed the Tigers have seen so far tonight. Kinsler will start things off. He had three hits in the first three innings, and the first Tiger to do that since Cabrera did it in May of 2012. Nuno, the lefty, goes to work. And Ian looks at a strike, 0 and 1. Even though Miguel Cabrera is on the disabled list, uh, he continues to make our show with some <laughs> of his numbers. Yes, he does. That'll always be the case. If we, you weren't with us earlier, we were talking about the ball that uh, J.D. Martinez hit last night, which traveled uh, 466 feet from home plate to straightaway center. Miguel Cabrera also has hit a ball 400. And 66 feet, which are the longest home runs in this ballpark. That'll miss inside. Nuno came over in that deal with Arizona with Mark Trumbo. They gave up Dominic Leone and a catcher by the name of Wellington Castillo, who's performing well now in the minor leagues for the Diamondbacks. Two balls, two strikes. Kinsler, Cespedes, Martinez here in the sixth inning. Whistle foul. Two doubles in a single for Kinsler. A nine hit homestand right now for Ian. Cespedes waiting on deck. In on his hands and he fouled it off his foot. Actually, his leg. Shin area. Here's the 2 2. Driven to center field. Ball hit well. Jackson on the move. He'll get to the warning track to run it down. One gone. Is that catch that uh, Jackson made here in the near perfect game by Alaraz, by Colorado? The best you've seen in this ballpark. Yeah, you know, Austin has made a few of them, but I think based on A, the type of catch it was, and the degree of difficulty, and how, how much room he covered, and B, the, uh, the stage it was on, obviously. Yeah, I'd probably have to go with that one. Yeah, that was a spectacular catch by Austin. Unbelievable, really. Did he make like a leaping catch in Cleveland? He did. Bring the home run back he off sure size did. more? He sure did. It was a Verlander start, I seem to recall. It's a one to nothing game, too. Yeah. It's amazing how we remember some of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, they stick out. Ball outside is Cespedes. I don't know what it is with Jonas and his numbers against left handers. Clobber and righties this year, but left handers, they've kind of held him in check. The old reverse splits. One and two on Cespedes. They're the numbers. Whoa, it's a huge split. Waving a miss. And down he goes again. Two outs. Well, Saturday it's a Major League Baseball doubleheader starting with the Athletics taking on the Giants. Then at 7 p.m. Eastern, the Braves battle the Cardinals in a game you can only see on Fox Sports 1. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and then streaming live also on Fox Sports Go. Got to get Victor going again. He is 0 for 3 in this game. Knocked into a double play in the first. Victor a little jumpy right now, batting right-handed. He's grounded out to the third baseman twice here tonight. And that's an indication of uh, Victor. They're not trusting his hands and not thinking about using the biggest part of the ballpark, which would be left center field to right center field. 
2 0 the count. Martinez now 4 for 21 in the homestand. Two zero is in there a strike. Here's the two one. Two balls, two strikes on Martinez. The 2 2. Fly ball center field right at Jackson, who is under it. And a 1 2 3 inning here in the sixth. We go to the seventh. Both of these teams here this evening. Cano is the second baseman for the Mariners, and of course, Iglesias, the shortstop. They play the game a different way. Iglesias plays a little bit faster at the shortstop position. Cano, he has a strong throwing arm for a second baseman. Doesn't look like he has much range, but he covers a lot of ground, and he is about as steady as they come at that position. Two outstanding performers. Cano has won two gold gloves. Iglesias trying to win his first. Well, we're on our way to the seventh inning here. Eight to four is our score. Sanchez goes back to work and he delivers outside 1 0. It'll be the bottom two Miller, Zanino, then up to the top in Jackson. Miller is 0 for 2, strikeout, ground out. Ball outside 2 0. Got notification from a buddy of mine who reminded me that the catch in Cleveland was Curtis Branderson and not Austin Jackson. Got our center fielders mixed up. I'm sure Austin made a catch there too. <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> Here's a strike called at it's two and one. Miller now is one for 11 in the series. Here's the two one pitch. And it's outside three balls in one strike. It's nice to have good buddies like that yeah. that can uh, they got your back. refresh your memory, get you back on track. Absolutely. With all the games we see, sometimes they just all run together. The 3 1. And there is a leadoff walk. Didn't want to see that here in the seven. And here's our high speed pitch, and always it is brought to you by Xfinity. And Anibal Sanchez has been as high as 94 with his four seam fastball tonight, and he has touched that velocity quite often this evening. That'll be the second walk for Sanchez. 
Mike Zanino will stand in. Tigers at one point led eight nothing, then a three run fourth and a one run sixth has cut it to eight four. Uh, left side of the Tigers infield, they need to be on alert. And Zanino hits a lot of balls to the shortstop and also to the third baseman. Hit an absolute rocket and down toward Cassianos his last time up. Wilson and Kroll. Sanchez missed outside. Rich Donnelly running through the signs. Zanino hit the ball hard down the third base line his last time and came up empty. Fouled away, one ball, one strike. Slated at first by Miller and he'll draw a throw. It was close. Okay, you were right. Jackson did make a good play in Cleveland. Remember? <laughs> in 2011, he threw out Kosuke Fukudome to end the game and seal a sweep. I remember, remember that. that I got that one. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're on board with that one. Papa Grande was pitching. That's right. Popped him up. Shallow right field, JD coming in. Zanino is out. One away. Calling all Michigan State University alumni, students, and fans. Get a Tigers hat in Spartans Green and a ticket to see the Tigers play the Rangers August 21st at 708 when you buy a special ticket package exclusively at Tigers.com slash MSU. Them your people, they'd be in the house. Yeah, I can have a lot of my folks up there. Go green. A lot of the uh, EMU folks here tonight. Yes, they are. This is their night. They're going to perform in the seventh inning on the field. Here is Jackson. Follow up. By the way, did you know who is a proud alum of EMU? No, who is that? It would be our director, Brian Mott. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah, he went to EMU. He's excited about tonight. <laughs> there we go. I'm surprised that's the first shot we've gotten on the mascot. <laughs> it's taken a while. You opened the door for it. Yeah, the eagle wearing the Tiger D. Looks like McCann got uh, dinged up. Did he get his throat? Oh, yeah, it snuck underneath the mask. Oh, right up and under. Back to first again. Miller dives back in. Eight runs, eight hits for the Tigers. Four runs, eight hits for Seattle. There, a strike 0 oh 2 on Jackson. Kyle Seeger waiting on deck as Sanchez approaches 100. He's at 97 right now. And Sanchez has the uh, better part of their lineup lurking. The 0 2. In the air to shallow center. Davis on the move, and it's going to be Martinez to cut in front of him. Yeah. And so the runner holds it first. Two gone. Miller going nowhere. That'll bring up Seeger. Double in three at bats for Kyle Seeger.
269 for the year now for Seeger. There's Jeff Jones again toward the telephone. That's in there for a strike. Yeah, that last uh, phone call down to the bullpen might have been one to relay the message to uh, Alex Wilson that uh, Anibal Sanchez will not see Nelson Cruz again. He will be yours if he comes up in this inning. At least I would think that's what that conversation went like. I would be shocked if it wasn't that conversation. 0 and 1. Seeger has a double in this game. And a run scored. Will pop up back out of play. No balls, two strikes. Mariners hitters are uh, fighting very hard here in tonight's game as uh, Sanchez reaches the century mark and pitches thrown. Really only one stressful inning, which will be the fourth. And, but if you're Lloyd McClendon's Mariners, you know you have to somehow try to come back and win this game because you know who's waiting for you tomorrow. Would be David Price. Price Iwakuma tomorrow in the series finale. They hit a Iwakuma around pretty good the last time they saw him in Seattle, but he was making his first start off the disabled list. Hit three homers against Iwakuma. Tigers scored a lot of runs in that series over in Seattle. That three game set, they won two out of three. And the Tigers in that series scored 24 runs. One and two on Kyle Seeger. There's Cruz on deck. And the ball Sanchez has had 12 02 counts in this game. Wow. 12 of them. Rudder goes. Ball high. McCann's throw is a little high and a stolen base. Even though uh, James McCann has a cannon. Behind the plate with the jump that Miller got off Sanchez. He had really no chance at throwing Brad out. No chance whatsoever. Miller is 10 of 11 now. Not too big of a jump. Now Seeger will try and cash him in here with a 2 2 pitch coming. And he slices one to left field right at Cespedes. It's going to drop in a base hit. They're going to hold the runner at third base, and that'll put him at the corner. Well, that's a wise decision by Rich Donnelly, the third base coach, not trying to force the issue there, not with Cespedes in the outfield, and not with Nelson Cruz coming up. It's going to be it for Anibal, it appears. Yep. Going to the bullpen is Brad Osmus. So Sanchez will depart here with runners at first and third. They are his property. We're in the seventh. Sanchez walking off. He told you the story with uh, Rich Donnelly. And the bond that they share. And he walks off with a tip of the cap to the fans to give him a nice round of applause. Eight four game. We'll be back.
Covered out of the bullpen are the Tigers. And Annabelle hoping that uh, the pen can strand a couple of runners here. The numbers on Sanchez six and two thirds, nine hits, four runs, but he is responsible for the two men aboard. Uh, Wilson has uh, inherited 25 base runners this year. 11 of those have come around to touch home plate, so that's not a very good ratio. But overall, Wilson has been tremendous this year. 199 ERA, 28 strikeouts, only eight walks, and the whip just a shade over one. Driven foul down the right field line. Two home runs for Nelson Cruz. He has 24 for the year. No balls, one strike. 19 of the 24 have come away from his home ballpark in Seattle. 1-1 one, one count. And those are just crazy splits. This is the fourth multi-homer game this year for Cruz. Of course, he had a lot of uh, home runs in the month of April. Hit 10 of his homers in April. He hit 40 last year. He was the only big leaguer to reach that plateau last season. He hit 40 on the nose. Fouled off and home plate. One, two. Wilson's got a fastball that gets up to about 93 miles an hour. Also a sinker. Anywhere from 89 to 91. He's got a change up that he'll use uh, occasionally. He also has a slider and a cut fastball. Albuquerque now has joined Hardy. And both Hardy and Albuquerque threw in last night's game. Albuquerque only threw one third of an inning. The one two. Back out of play. Cruz still alive. Not only does he have two homers tonight, but also a double, so he's three for three. Wilson here in the seventh. Trying to protect a four-run lead. There's Cano waiting on deck. Rolled foul. That's a good two seam fastball at 93 running it on the hands of Nelson Cruz. That's really where you want to go. You want to tie him up. And because once he's able to extend those arms, he does a lot of damage. Again, back out of play. So Cruz giving Wilson a battle. Yeah, you might want to elevate more. Go upstairs with a good fastball, about 93, about letter high, to see if you can get Nelson Cruz to swing through it. He loves the ball down in the strike zone. Wilson came out in the ball game last night after the damage was done though he pitched the ninth inning. And trying to strand a couple of runners here in the seventh tonight. You better get it in there. Swing and a miss struck him out. 93 mile an hour fastball by Cruz to win the inning and the threats. Seattle strands pair coming up the Dick Scott Automotive seventh inning stretch.
Paul Sanchez had six strikeouts in the game, and most of the strikeouts came on forcing fastballs at 94 miles an hour. Apparently, that was the game plan coming in for Sanchez to try to throw some fastballs by the Seattle Mariners hitters, which he was able to do tonight. You know, the Tigers have an 8 4 lead as we go to the stretch here at the ballpark. Bottom of the seventh coming up. And it's J.D. Martinez to lead it off for Detroit. And he looks at a strike. Martinez will be followed by Castellanos and then McCann. J.D. has been walked intentionally in this game. He has come around to score. He'll take a ball outside, 1 1. Tigers got all eight of their runs in the third. They have not scored since. Way high, two balls, one strike. Nuno took over in the sixth, had a one, two, three, sixth inning. Followed off the mask of the catcher, Zunino. Zunino just looks like a catcher, doesn't he? He does. Yep, he was a uh, Golden Spikes winner in Florida. Johnny Bench Award for the nation's best collegiate catcher. He wanted up, but that was too far up. It's three and two on JD. Well, they're high on him for sure. He is their catcher of the future. That's why he is still in the everyday lineup, even though his batting average is about 160. It's pulled foul. JD out in front of that changeup just a hair. Does he provide enough defensively to carry that 160 average? Well, if you look at their pitching staff and how well they've done this year, yeah. Well, I'm sure that's the main reason why Zanino continues to get consistent reps behind the plate, but at some point in time, he's going to have to hit. 3 2. High fly ball into shallow center of the shortstop. On the grass to make the catch. That's Miller, one gone. Let's take a look at the big boys, big plays of the game. Cassianos has had a really nice day so far. He had his big boy britches on. And back in the third, grand slam. About 420 feet from home plate. Then in the fifth inning, Zunino making a bid for a double down the left field line. One step at a dime. And an accurate throw back across the diamond by Cassianos. So he's got it done with the bat. He's also got it done with the glove tonight. Nick will stand in here with one out, and he looks at ball one. He is just torn up. The Mariners pitching 10 for 21 with four homers and 13 driven in in six games this year. 13 RBI. You know you could buy big boy britches in the store these days. You know that, right? <laughs> We've gone from big boy pants to big boy britches. Yeah, they settled at Target. <laughs> Here's the one one. Stroke to center field and another hit for Castellano. Look out, Nick. Man, he has torn up Seattle Mariners pitching this year. And another. It's a little hanging breaking ball top of the strike zone and he gets on top of it. Barrels up for a solid single into the outfield. Is there any difference between a pair of britches and a pair of pants? No. No. Just the terminology. Okay. Make sure. So Castellanos coming out of the game and uh, Romine coming in. He usually takes over defensively late in games anyway. We'll give him a little more speed at first base. Tigers uh, trying to add on here. They scored all eight in the third and nothing since. Bouncing ball left side. Going to find a hole. Base hit. McCann is aboard, and the Tigers making some noise now here in the seventh. Bring up Marte. Infield single run scored for the number eight hitter Marte. And then 
dive low. One ball, no strikes. Tigers have rotated that first base position. Marte getting a chance here tonight. Chop foul, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, we knew when uh, Miguel went down with that calf injury, it was going to be impossible for anyone to fill a Miggy's shoes at first. Romine has got an opportunity. Avila, Marte, Kraus. Bouncing ball to the shortstop Miller flips to second one. Cano is really going to be tardy. Would hit hard enough. Marte getting down the line quickly. Well, sign up your child for the Detroit Tigers Kids Club. Members receive a $10 discount ticket offer, a hat, sling bag, and our first to run the bases after Sunday games at Comerica Park. Memberships are just 20 bucks. Visit Tigers.com slash Kids Club to order and get your child involved. Here's Iglesias now trying to deliver a two out knock. He's been hot today. Two doubles for Iglesias. One down the right field line. The other one down the left field line. Ooh, big swing there. Oh one. And nobody in baseball has a better batting average than Iglesias against left handed pitching. No one. Jose tonight knocked in a run with one of his doubles. Good block by Zanino, one ball, one strike. I said that uh, Alex Rodriguez should get some uh, con serious, some serious consideration for a comeback player of the year. Iglesias has to be in that conversation. I was right. Yeah, right in their own uh, noses here. Doesn't hit for power, but he does everything else. Well, he plays defense. He has been top five in the league and hitting most of the year. All star. One and two. Two two now on Iglesias. Rajay Davis on deck. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Away. Nuno broke in with the Yankees, went to Arizona in 2014. Joe Bimel warming up. With the Diamondbacks parts of the last couple of years. Sliced foul again. Third, Marte at first. High fly ball, left field, hit well. Ackley warning track to make the catch. Tigers with a couple of hits, they strand two. We go to the eighth.
Good night, so night. So far tonight for the Tigers, they lead by a score of eight to four. Mario and Rod back here at the ballpark, and uh, well, Anibal Sanchez tonight got a big early lead to work with. It's pretty good to see. I like the way he used his fastball today. All of his fastballs were about 94 today. He was able to locate all of his fastballs, and for the most part, he kept Seattle off balance. Good to see the Tigers put up that eight spot because offensively they just continue to swing the bats pretty well and they needed most of those runs tonight. They scored a bunch of runs in last night's game too, but the one thing I'd like to see them continue to do this evening is somehow, some way, try to score a few more runs here tonight. They've only had that one inning, as you mentioned, where they scored the eight spot tonight. Back to the bullpen go the Tigers. Blaine Hardy has taken over here in the eighth. And Cano rips one to right center field. Rajay on the run. Running play by Davis. Robinson Cano is hitting everything hard these days. Nice running grab out in center field by Davis. Keep Cano off the bases. Now Seth Smith will stand in. Play Smith to pull. Single and a walk tonight for Smith. He waves and misses all one. A couple of defensive subs for the Tigers. You saw Hardy. Romine stays in to play third. Krause is coming now to play first base. And there's that shift against the lefty Smith. Good pitch 0 2. So the combination of Hardy and Wilson again pitching in a ball game for the Tigers. They've been really good. Wilson from the right side, Hardy from the left side. High fly ball to center field. Rajay on the move on this one. Still going back, looking up, up against the base of the wall. That's going to be a double, and Smith has his second hit tonight. Not a good pitch by Hardy. It's a changeup to a left-hander, and the changeup stays up, and it's absolutely drilled. By Smith off the base of the wall. And not good execution here. Ten hits on the night for Seattle. 22nd double of the year now for Smith. Ball one to Mark Trumbo. Reaching on an air and getting an RBI in the fourth inning. We talked a little earlier in the ball game how the Tigers have not been executing pitching wise when the count gets to 0 and 2. That was another 0 2 hit. It's also the fourth double of the night for Seattle. Swing and a miss. A real nice breaking ball here thrown by Blaine Hardy. A knuckle curve, as a matter of fact. Action in the Tigers bullpen, Soria and Albuquerque. Grounded foul down the third baseline. One and two on Trumbo. That time to stay alive. And by Soria being up in that bullpen, it appears that to Brad Osmus at least entertaining the thought. If a rally comes about here in the eighth inning, he will use Soria tonight in the eighth. Took a lot of criticism last night for not using Joaquin Soria. Franklin Gutierrez ended up hitting the grand slam off Feliz. And Gutierrez has moved on deck. Checked it. 
Two and two on Trumbo. Each ball club ten hits tonight. We're in the eighth. Here's Gutierrez. And more than likely he'll see Fernando Rodney. I mean, excuse me. Al Albuquerque. Here's the 2 2. Just off the plate. 3 and 2 on Trumbo. Ooh. Close. Yeah, it was. Close enough to call. And the 3 2. Got him. Strike three. Trumbo frozen. He's out of there. Two gone. That's a better change up here. 3 2 count. Froze Trumbo. Couldn't pull the trigger. Here comes Brad now. That's going to be it for Hardy with the right hander Gutierrez. He'll make the signal to the bullpen. And Albuquerque coming in to face Gutierrez. Pitching change in Detroit. We'll be back. Series finale is Hisashi Iwakuma and David Price. And Price will be looking for his 10th victory uh, tomorrow afternoon with a 232 earned run average. Iwakuma's only made a handful of starts. He spent the majority of the season on the disabled list. Franklin Gutierrez will pinch hit here against Al Albuquerque. Albuquerque has uh, been good the last couple of months. And totaling 41 innings so far this year with a 327 ERA. Fastball goes from 92 to 95. And he's got a slider that he throws at several different speeds and several different breaks. Batting for Ackley. And this at bat, he takes the ball inside 1 0. Slider that stayed up and in. 3 0 6 in 15 games this year for Seattle. Another one that stayed up 2 and 0. Wilson got an out in the seventh. Hardy has gotten two outs here in the eighth. Miller, the number eight hitter, waiting on deck. Here's the 3 0. 
That's it. They're three and one. Swing and a miss. Three and two on Franklin. Good slider here thrown by Albuquerque in a 3 1 count. He's got another slider with a little bit tighter spin. He lost him. So it's a walk in a pinch hitting roll by Gutierrez. Yeah, Brad's going to go get him. He's going to bring his closer in. Wow. He is. So Soria coming in out of the bullpen. He'll be out there trying to get a four out save. Albuquerque facing one batter and he will depart. We'll be back. Don't miss MLB Whip Around on Fox Sports 1. Highlights, instant analysis, live look ins from around the league. MLB Whip Around is weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, Seattle hitting here with two men on and two men out. And Joaquin Soria, the Tigers' closer, coming on here in the eighth. They had 21 saves this year for Soria, 24 opportunities, a 3 1 9 ERA, 33 strikeouts, only nine walks. Sliced foul by Miller 0 and 1. And this will be the fourth attempt of this season at a four out save for Soria. He's converted two of three so far. Miller had a walk and a steal in the seventh. Two on for Seattle. Little low and away, one ball, one strike. Again, foul down the left field line, back in the seats in a hurry. Pretty good fastball there by Sori at 95 miles an hour. Each ball club with 10 hits. The Tigers lead it 8 to 4. They scored all eight of their runs in the third. Seattle chipped away with three in the fourth, one of the sixth. Up and in, two and two. Fortieth appearance of the year for Soria.
Hardy leads the team with 43 appearances. Missed it high, and the count fills now three and two. And if Soria were to lose Miller, that would bring the tying run to the plate. And that's Mike Zanino waiting on deck. Driven foul down the left field line, so Miller stays alive. Albuquerque came on to face one batter, and that was the pinch hitter Gutierrez, and he walked him. Big deep breath for Joaquim Soria. Runners again will be on the move. There they go. And it's fouled away again. Sanchez started this game. Was taken out of the seventh. Wilson got a strikeout to strand a couple of runners. This is Anibal's game to win. And if the Tigers win it, Sanchez will have won seven consecutive decisions. Bouncing ball slowly towards second on the charge as Kinsler quick flat is in time for the out. That'll take care of the side in the eighth. No runs. Double a walk, two men left. This was a close play. Firm to an 8 4 lead over Seattle. Coming up on a post game edition of Tigers Live, I'm going to be talking to Nick Castellanos, who uh, his grand slam kissed the bricks here early in this game, blew this one wide open. Also, talk with Annabelle Sanchez after his start tonight. Certainly, we'll catch up with Brad Osmus as well. The guys holding it down back in the Call Sam Studios, that's Trevor Thompson and Craig Monroe. They'll take care of that and probably take a look around the American League Central as well. But for now, we got more baseball to play here at Comerica Park, and we'll head it back up to the booth there with Mario and Ron. All right, Johnny, thanks very much. Hey, by the way, give Nick Castellanos my best when you talk to him, all right? Uh, definitely, definitely will. <laughs> Grand, <laughs> Grand slam tonight, and uh, the big blow for the Tigers will go to the bottom of the eighth here. It'll be Rajay Davis to get things started for Detroit. Franklin Gutierrez remains in the game to play left field. Joe Bimel has come on now, and his first one is in there for a strike. All left handers tonight. And Lloyd McClendon has uh, gone to Montgomery, Rollins, Nuno, and now Bimel. 
29th appearance for Bimal. Rajay lines one foul. Oh, and two on Davis. He hit twice in that eight run third, was on base twice, scored a couple of runs. Does not have a hit tonight. He reached on an air and also reached on a walk. One and two. Bimel replaces Nuno, who pitched two innings tonight for Seattle. Stroke to center field. Jackson on the run. He'll get there. Wrong part of the ballpark for Davis. One gone. And the wrong guy to hit it to. No doubt. They follow the Tigers all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. And bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Again, MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Here's Ian Kinsler. Balls one strike on Kinsler at Comerica Park tonight in downtown Detroit for game three in this series. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen, Joe Nicola is our producer, Brian Moss, our director. That stroke to right field, and that is going to drop base hit. Four hit game for Ian today. Two singles, two doubles. He hit it just like Bimel threw it. Little fading change up away that Ian stayed with right off the end of the bat. So Bible now will face Cespedes. Tigers have 11 hits in this game. Bimel is 39 years old. His first year in the big leagues was way back in 2001. Broke in with the Pirates. Didn't spend a whole lot of time in the minor leagues. Pitched in Minnesota, Tampa, L.A., Washington, Colorado among his stops. We'll shoot that one to right field. Base hit. Kinsler will hold at second base as Cruz gets it back in. It's a really nice at bat by Cespedes. We gave you his numbers earlier. He has not had a good year against left handed pitching. And, but he goes down and gets a really nice pitch from Bible. And hits it very sharply into right field. Couldn't go down and get it. Victor Martinez. Twelve Tigers hits now. Victor in search of his first. He is 0 for 4. Bouncing ball left side. There's his first hit. Kinsler, they're going to wave him around. Here comes the throw to the plate. Offline, throw back down to third, and he is out there. Run will score, give Martinez a single and an RBI. Cespedes is thrown out at third. And Victor finally able to hit one through the left side of the infield. Very aggressive coaching by the third base coach, Dave Clark. Which allowed Ian Kinsler to score, but Cespedes uh, thrown out trying to get over to third base. So, with two outs, here is JD Martinez. It's a huge run right there. It puts the Tigers out of grand slam distance. 13th hit of the game now for Detroit. There's already been two grand slams in the series one for the Tigers, one for Seattle. 
33rd RBI for Martinez as well to make it 9 to 4. Driven foul. Chevrolet brings you the high strength steel, and that's exactly what JD Martinez did to Seth Smith back in the third inning. A rocket off the wall. Smith, well, he tried to stretch it into a double, and JD Martinez, he recorded his 11th assist of the season. The 11th assist for JD Martinez are second in Major League Baseball. Part of this game that just gets uh, no attention at all. High fly ball, shallow left center field. Gutierrez comes in. That'll take care of the Tigers. However, they get another run. Now 9 to 4. We go to the ninth. Grand Slam, Kinsler, his third four hit game this season. Nelson Cruz, well, he just keeps hitting homers. He's hit two of them in this game. But if you total it all up, the Tigers have a nice lead now, nine to four. Anthony Ghost comes in to take over in center field. And Soria, who got the final out in the eighth, goes to work in the ninth. And he faces Mike Zanino. Mariners have gotten no production from the bottom of the lineup tonight. Six through nine is 0 for 13. Well, their production has come from the top. Breaking ball dips low. One ball, one strike. Tigers three outs away from getting back to 500. They're 46 and 47 right now. Two and one. Astoria yeah, will throw that really slow breaking ball at least three times an outing. And that fastball at, I mean, excuse me, that breaking ball at 76 miles an hour. He's gotten one even slower than that. The 2 2 pulled into left field, a leadoff single for Zanino. It'll be his first hit of the night. Well, as promised earlier in the game, we have selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag DetroitDataStrongFan 
for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Back up to the top of the line of now Austin Jackson. Jackson has revved up in this series. Two more hits. He now has six in the series. And batting 379 over his last seven games. Austin Jackson has always really liked to hitting in this ballpark. And coming to play last night, Jackson, the 293 career batter right here at Comerica Park. He feels comfortable in that batter's box. Here's that one that came in at 69 miles an hour. Slow breaking ball, but it stayed up two and one. Jackson single double in this game. Two and two on Austin. Kyle Seeger waiting on deck. Here's the 2 2. McCann blocks it, but the count has gone full now. 3 and 2. Tigers scored eight in the third. They added one more in the eighth. It's fouled away. One more between these two teams tomorrow that'll end up the season series for these two squads. And the Tigers head out on a 10 game road trip. Boston, Tampa, and finish up with Baltimore. Y'all packed? I'm halfway packed. That's a lot of packing in it for 10 days when you gotta wear coats and ties, 10 day trip. Yeah, usually uh, those are the toughest to get packed for. Did it before, we'll do it again. The 3 2. Another foul back out of play by Jackson. Count stays full. And Jackson is uh, giving Anibal Sanchez a battle here. Sorry, excuse me. This will be the eighth pitch coming up in this at bat. He gave Sanchez a battle too earlier. Another foul back to the screen. Soria came on to get the ground out from Miller with two men on. In the eighth inning in a four run game, Tigers went on to get one in the bottom of the eighth to make it a five run game. Walked him, and that'll put the first two Mariners on here in the ninth. What an at bat by Austin Jackson. It's never easy, is it? Nope, it's never easy. Brad Osmus and Jeff Jones watching the first two reach here. The, the McKenna going out to the mound to have a conversation as Seeger is coming up. So now the part of the order is lurking for Seattle. Yep, they're going to hit. The heart of the order is going to get up. Two on, nobody out. Lead off single by Zanino, a walk to Jackson. Six. 
Seeger had a base hit in his last at bat. He's two out of four tonight. In there for a strike, 0 and 1. Seattle two out of eight with men in scoring position this evening. They came in as the worst team in the American League in that category. One and one. Driven foul down the left field line. One two now on Seeger. Tigers won two out of three from Seattle back in the West Coast of the last road trip. Uh, if they win tonight, they'll take two out of the first three. Bruce Rondon warming up. Story is one two swing and a miss. Or did he foul it on uh, McCann tried to sell it couldn't do so. Yeah he did. He had us. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> he didn't even have the ball. <laughs> No Academy Awards for McCann. No. Right now. Ground ball to second. There's one. Here comes two. A double play. Boy, did Soria need that. Two gone with a runner in third. It's a great pitch by Soria. It's a really nice play by Kinsler. Really firm underhand backhand feed to Iglesias who was able to finish it off. Now one more out to get. And it's been a tough out tonight. Nelson Cruz with three hits including two homers. He's also doubled. Ball one high. Swing and a miss by Cruz. One ball and one strike. Center field goes has it measured and the Tigers win. <laughs> Suffice to say they needed this one tonight. And Tigers with a really nice opportunity tomorrow afternoon to win a series against Seattle, which they need to do. They need to win series every time they go out. Well, just like we promised you earlier in the game, it is Miller time, and it is brought to you by Miller Light. The Tigers scored eight runs in one inning. That would be in the third inning, and they got four of those on one mighty swing of the bat off of Nick Cassianos for a grand slam, the first of his major league career. So the Tigers go on to win this one. Joaquin Soria nails hit shut nine for your final. We'll be back.